See, I know what it's like to go through the motions, and I know what it's like, man, to have the pressure of acting and talking and looking a certain type of way and fitting in with certain groups and crowds and cliques of people, and the pressure from the community and the pressure from the people around us, the pressure from those peers wanting us to, to maintain these images. And, man, if we were 100% real, raw, truthful, and honest, even though we don't like to admit it, man, we care so much about what people think about us. And if we're not careful, we find ourselves trying to meet the expectations of everybody else and it's not wrong to have to have people have expectations on us. But at the end of the day, man, if you're only focusing on what you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to become, it's going to have all this anxiety attached to it because we fall short. And I had to learn the hard way, man. We are all beautifully broken somehow, some way. We've all got stuff, man. And it's not about you being perfect. And it's not about your performance all the time. It's about daily progress because nobody can judge you if you're if you're applying yourself with your effort you only know you and you can sell yourself short this year if you want to and you can cut the corners if you want to and you can do just enough to get by if you want to but I promise you all man as you guys grow up and as you continue to mature and as you look back in the rear view mirror of your life if you don't take control and understand that this is your moment and if you don't take control of this man regrets Thoughts of, man, I wish I should have and I could have, and only what if, they will come alive. But man, you're at a place and a space in all of your lives right now that you control your destiny and nobody can take it from you. And I want you to dream big and dream outlandish and set goals and benchmarks that seem sometimes even too far to attain because I promise you, your dreams and your goals, they shouldn't come easy. And if dreams and goals and things you want to pursue and things you want to become, if they're coming easy, I'm challenging you to step the bar even higher because you can press yourself and you can grow. And it's tough, man. Grow and change and, and becoming the better you, it's not comfortable. Nobody likes to be uncomfortable, but change takes change. And nobody can change without being a little bit uncomfortable. And the reason a lot of us don't change our attitudes, our behaviors, how we treat each other is because we don't like to be uncomfortable. It's easier to go back to being who we've always been. But man, that's never going to give you your destiny. And I'm passionate about these things, man, because I mean it. I've lived it. I've walked both sides of the aisle. A lot of y'all know that. If you don't remember exactly, I come from a broken family. My moms and my dad set me down at a young age, and my dad was ripped out of my life, and he was my icon, and he was my mentor, and he was my role model, and he was yanked out of my life. And man, I blamed him for all of my hurts and all of my pains, and I wore my mask, and I walked the walk, and I talked the talk, and I acted like I was okay, and I went through the motions, and everything on the surface looked so picture perfect, but below the surface was hurts and pains and anger and frustration and wounds, but I was so afraid to talk about it. And I thought, keeping my mask on and letting everybody think that on the surface that I was okay was going to keep me safe, but at the end of the day, it was the very prison that was en enchaining me, man. And I had to learn the hard way that we're beautifully broken and we're better together. And every single person has stuff. And the more that I don't isolate and don't try to become an island and do this on my own, man, we are better together and we need each other. Every student in here, you need your classmates, you need your friends, you need mentors and teachers and parents in your lives. And even though sometimes, man, we think in our culture we can figure this thing all out, I promise you, you need not only friends on a horizontal plane, you've got to have people in your life on a vertical plane that can speak into your life, that's walked through some challenges in the life, and that can help you from making the same mistakes that maybe they made. And I used to fight against that, man. I was so against allowing any kind of influential authority figure in my life because I thought they were trying to control me. But now as I turn around on the hindsight, I realize those people were just trying to prevent me from making the same mistakes that they made. And if I could go back and yield to some of those words of wisdom, I promise you I would. But I wore my mask and I went from middle school to high school and I compromised myself. And what I mean by that is I gave in to the peer pressure of the people around me. When I went from middle school to high school, I had some great friends in my life. But man, those friends were the popular kids, so I thought I had to change up who I was to fit in. 
I changed up who I was so all of you would accept me and all of you would like me and I would fit the molds and the types of the people that you thought I was supposed to become. And I walked away from real friends that valued me. Biggest mistake in my life. And as I began to hang out with the new crew and the new crowd and the new cliques of kids, they didn't value me. And I'll tell you what, who you spend time with, they will influence your life. And I began to create some terrible habits and how I treated people because the hurting people hurt people. And y'all know that. A lot of us, we operate, we can call it bullying, but let's call it what it really is. It's verbal, mental, and emotional abuse, and it's wrong. Hurting people hurt people. Feel it. Your feelings can lie to you. And I can prove it. Because I know sometimes in our culture, in this generation, we feel like we're all by ourselves. We feel like nobody understands us. We feel like we're all alone. And let me ask this question. I need every every junior and every freshman in this room to own this question. And I don't care about the friends that are around you. This is you and me, and this is real, man, and it is real, and this is our life, and this is our future. How many of you knew in here, if you were 100% honest with yourself, truthfully being genuine with your feelings and your emotions, are there times in your story, in your life, do you sometimes feel honestly like nobody understands you? And honestly, sometimes you feel like you're all by yourself. Raise your hand. Hold them high, man. And hands go up all across the room. You know why? Because even though we feel like we're all alone, you're not the only person who feels like that. Hands were everywhere. Many of us feel the way you're feeling. Adults feel the way you're feeling. People feel the way you're feeling. But what you can't do is be impulsive and think that making a forever decision to end it solves it. It doesn't. You're robbing you of your destiny. You're robbing people around you that believe in you. I promise you, there is a fear of talking. But when you begin to talk, and I know there's a fear sometimes of, man, what will happen if I say this? This is going to happen, then this is going to happen. And what if, and what if, and what if? We what if, and this anxiety thing grows. And 99.9% of the times when you actually talk about it, it never turns out nearly as bad as what you think it is. It's that fear of the unknown. I promise you, I ripped my mask off 10 years ago, man. And I've never experienced more freedom, more success, more peace of mind. I realize life isn't about just existing. It's about experiencing all that life has for us. And in this room is greatness. I promise you. And for me, my wreck happened. 23 years old. I go to prison for 15, sentenced to 15 years in prison. And it would have been really easy for me to throw in the towel. It would have been really easy for me to say, you know what, I give up. I come from a broken family, suicidal thoughts, self-harm, eating disorders. I've been homeless. I found myself sleeping on the streets. I stole from friends. I had been labeled by everybody around me. I battled drug addictions, you name it. I had experienced it. It would have been real easy if there was anybody that could have said, you know what, my past is bigger than my future. I give up. It would have been me. But I remember something that my father taught me when I was that kid. When he told me at the end of the day, Nathan, as long as there's breath in your lungs, there's hope in your heart, don't you dare quit. And he taught me that through that basketball experience that I had when he beat the brakes off of me playing basketball. And he told me at the end of the day, Nathan, don't compare yourself. Don't give up. See the problem? He was the the problem keeping me from reaching, making buckets and making goals. And he said, listen, Nathan, see the problem, identify the problem, then figure out the solution. Don't let the problem consume you. Be consumed with answers and solutions. You don't stop until you figure it out. Giving up is not an option. And so today, this year two talk, this year three talk, this talk that I'm about to give on to you guys, man, these are things that I have learned in the last 10 years of my life when I got released in 2000, what year was it? 2013, six years ago. I didn't do 15 years. I got released 11 years early. Why? Because the first off, I took control of my life. And what I mean by that, I know as young men and as young ladies and as people, there are things that happen to us that we have no control over, no influence in. We didn't ask for it. We just have to deal with it. Broken families, losing loved ones. Verbal, mental, and emotional, physical abuses that have happened to us. Some of us have experienced real, tragic, traumatic, difficult situations that we didn't ask for. But it was like somebody put this plate of food and puts it right in front of you and says, this is your life. Deal with it. And you're like, man, I don't want it, but it's yours to figure it out. And for some of us, 
We've had to deal with life consequences because of our poor choices and our poor decisions. And we put our back against the wall because of some of the poor mistakes that we've made. And we got to kind of own those. And when I went to prison, it would have been really easy for me to say, you know what, I give up. I didn't ask and deserve some of these things. Some of these things were my own poor, my, my own poor choices, my wreck, my accident, my drugs, my addictions. But I didn't ask for my mom and my dad to be broken out of my family. But you know what I realized, y'all? I was allowing things that I had no control over to control me. I used to blame my dad for everything growing up as a kid. I blamed him for my attitude. I blamed him for my drug use. I blamed him for my, how I treated others. I blamed him when I skipped school. He was my excuse for everything. And at the end of the day, I had no control over that situation, but I was giving it all the control over me. I had to first off recognize something. I'm not going to allow things that I have no control over to control me. I can control how I react. I can control how I respond. And I can control what I do going forward. I took control of my, my life. Make good choices. Great things happen. Take ownership. Stop making excuses. You know what our culture lacks right now? We lack the ability to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, and forgive me. We want to we put blame on anybody else and everybody else around us. I've learned when I've made mistakes, I just own it, man. Not because at the end of the day I'm embarrassed, but I know we're all beautifully broken. We all make mistakes. We've all got stuff somehow, some way. And I've learned my mistakes set me up for future wins because I don't lose in life. I win or I learn. I win or I learn. And I may make a mistake, but I own it radically, emphatically. I don't play the blame game. If I was wrong, I make it, I claim it, and I move forward. Because at the end of the day, man, life's about progress. And so for me, 50, 2009, when my wreck happened, 10 years ago, I wrote those words, and this is kind of what we talked about at the end of last year for some of us, the juniors. I wrote those words, changed the world, slapped on my little prison wall. And I decided then to take control of my life, Priscilla's family, They asked me to do two things. First off, they radically forgave me, and I don't know why. They forgave me, and that's a whole other story for another day, for another talk, for another venue. But this family forgave me, and they said, Nathan, we don't think that one dumb choice should destroy two families' lives. But they asked me to do two things. Don't let our daughter die for nothing and try to make the world a better place. And I said yes, and I didn't even know what that meant. But I know when I went to that prison, at the end of the day, I wasn't going to look at my circumstances. I wasn't going to look at everything around me. At the end of the day, I was going to be present in the moment, present with my current reality, and absolutely do the best that I could to grow day in and day out with personal growth and personal development. When I came against things that I didn't agree with, or I came against with against people that I didn't agree with, or I came against an authority at the prison, man, I used to buck authority all the time, I hated authority, but when I had to realize something, at the end of the day, if I can't learn to respect people, if I can't learn to respect those around me, if I can't learn to respect the people who are in charge of me, how am I ever going to learn to respect my dream? Because if you don't respect that dream, that thing that's inside of you, and you know what that thing is, that thing that you're passionate about, that thing that you, if you can do anything in the world, that would be your reality. That would be your future. That thing that's big, that dream that's massive, that thing, if you don't learn to respect people, you're never going to learn to respect that dream. Because unless you respect your dreams and give them your time, your effort, your sacrifice, your focus, unless you're willing to actually take the time to invest in that dream, it's never going to become real. It's called respect. And the best way I've learned to respect my dream was to respect people. The best way I've learned to respect my Myself was respect people, letting people's lives have value and let, uh, uh, understanding that people, people that can speak into my life, that can help me learn, man, that's tough. Dude, that was the hardest part I had, to, that was the hardest thing I had to deal with. So here I was in prison, facing 15 years, I wrote Change the World, slapping on my bathroom mirror. And I didn't realize it, but I developed these five habits in my heart and my mind that's changed my life. I call them the five. 
And it wasn't until about 18 months ago that I realized I had developed these attitudes and these characteristics and these habits that's helped me be 10 years sober. That's helped me be 10 years since I've thought of it in my life. That's helped me be 10 years since I've self-harmed. It's helped me be 10 years since I've had an eating disorder. That's helped me 10 years overcome depression, anxiety, all these issues. It's these habits that I've developed and I've, I've now recognized it was these things that I was intentional of wanting to be better at. It's changed my life. And I call them the five and they're simply this. I learned to be transparent. I learned to be accountable. I learned to work hard. I learned to make good choices and I had to value people. Those five things will change your life forever. And those aren't five things for you to learn to do when you graduate college or when you learn to graduate, when you, when you, when you're often beginning your career and after your first mistake, like these are five things right now as high school students, you can begin to say, I want to develop on these each and every day. And I call it the five and it's changed my life. Learning to be transparent, accountable, hard work, good choices, and value people. You see, when I talk about being transparent, transparency literally means see-through. I had to live a life that I understood something, that if I wouldn't allow people to see my hurts, my pains, and my struggles, if I wouldn't live a life that was somewhat see-through, where light and vision and people could see some of my shortcomings, where I had to also find the courage to talk about my hurts, my struggles, and my pain. Transparency really is this. It's taking off the mask and the fake smiles and the fake faces and acting like you just don't care, but being honest and truthful with somebody in your life, that mentor, that coach, that trusted caring adult, those best friends, where you're willing to be transparent and speak up and speak out and understand that it's okay to not be okay and it's okay to make mistakes, but you have to own them. I learned to live a life that was transparent. Transparent. And you know why? Unless we're willing to be transparent on some of those character defaults that we have, maybe they're your bad attitudes, your procrastination, how you treat people, your addiction, whatever it is. Until I learn to be transparent, the opposite of transparent is being condensed and being 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 having the mask where you can't see. People can't help you if they don't know. And if you're not really, 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 really ready to change and to let it go. A lot of us say, you know what, Nathan? I hate my anxiety. You know what, Nathan? I hate my depression. You know what, Nathan? I want to stop the addiction. You know what, Nathan? I've been self-harming, but I'm struggling to quit. You know what, Nathan? I want to change this. I know I got a bad attitude. A lot of us will talk about it, but we're so afraid to take the steps called accountability where you allow people to speak into your life. See, accountability isn't you giving people permission to to, to hold you accountable and get you into trouble. Accountability is for you because you've already decided there's some areas in your life that you want to change. And change takes intentional choices to be different. And so if there's some things that if you were honest and you gave yourself a real assessment and you were like, you know what, truthfully, I know I got a bad attitude. You know what, truthfully, man, there's an addiction that I've been battling with and I want to get off, but man, I'm struggling. Many of us have battled with self-harm. There's been many of times you've wanted to stop, but you struggled and you can't seem to stop because you've created a poor habit. And many of us who battle those thoughts of giving up, man, you're so afraid to actually let somebody help hold you accountable and to walk through that with you. See, when I began to be transparent and to air my stuff out, and to find trusted, caring adults, a mentor, a coach, a friend. When I began to be that person, and I'm not saying you go out here and talk to any random Yahoo in the world. That's not what I'm saying. But we all have those people in our lives that we know care about you. Those are the ones. And when I began to get honest with that person and allowed him to hold me accountable, again, his accountability in my life, it wasn't that he was trying to dictate and be my boss. I had given a trusted, caring friend of mine the permission to call me on my stuff 
Why? Again, it's not because I had to meet their expectation. They're holding me accountable because I have a desire to really change. And if I don't change attitudes, nothing's going to change. Change takes intentional choices to be different. So for me, I started being transparent. I took off my mask and being accountable. And then I realized hard work works. You can't get around hard work, y'all. I'll be honest, our culture, let's be real, we're lazy, y'all. Be honest, we are, it's so easy for us just to jump on Google to find every answer to every question that we want. And at the end of the day, yep, you may get an A, but not every A is an A. And this is what I'm saying by that. You can jump on there and you can cut the corners and you can make every little loophole and still get on the surface what looks like an A, but you didn't learn anything about life. Why would you rob yourself the ability to really grow in life? Not every A is an A. I don't care what you say. At the end of the day, you can't get around hard work. And this is what's amazing about this, this, this world we live in. Success, it's not that difficult, y'all. Because 99.9% .9 of the people out there, and that may be a high exaggeration, but it's not too high. The majority of the people don't really want to put in the work. They don't want to roll up their sleeves and actually go after their dream. We all like to talk about it. We all like to post about it. We all like to tell people about it. But talk is cheap. What you do is what you believe, y'all. And for the most part, people don't want to put in the work. And so if you can just begin to take one step after one step, slowly moving towards your dream, I promise you that dream, that goal, that thing you want to achieve, it's not going to be nearly as difficult as what you think it is. Because for the most part, others don't want it as bad as you. But you just got to take control of this thing. Hard work works. And hard work and learning to make good choices in the moment. Listen, you can skip school if you want to or you don't have to. You can have an attitude if you want to or you don't have to. You can do random acts of kindness or you can pick on somebody. You can be disrespectful or you can be respectful. But I've learned making the right choice. And we all know what the right choice is. All of us in our heart, in our gut, in our mind, we know what we should and we shouldn't be doing. And the more I learned to listen to that voice and the more I began to always balance every idea of my dream of wanting to change the world. I wanted to become an inspirational speaker. I wanted to travel the country. I wanted to give hope to the hopeless, be a voice to the voices. That was my dream. And so in the moment, even in the middle of my terrible circumstance, I'm in prison battling all of these issues. Every day when I woke up, I looked at my dream and I said, I'm going to make conscious decisions to make good choices and not bad choices. And I say it a lot and it's this way in your mirrors all my juniors freshmen if you're driving I don't know if you are not but in your side view mirrors it says objects in the mirror are closer than things appear and what it means what you see reflecting back at you it's not as far away as what you think it is and all of your dreams and all of your goals and the things you want to achieve and the things you want to become they don't start when you graduate they're right here they're right now your dreams and your goals are closer than objects appear in the mirror, I promise you. And so for me, I began to slow down and not be impulsive. See, in the moment, when everybody else is doing something, in the moment, when, everybody, when everything else seems like it's not a big deal, I had to slow down and ask myself the question, is this going to help or destroy, build or grow? I don't want to be impulsive in my choices. Hard work, good choices. And then the last one's the toughest one. The last one is one of the most difficult ones that we're facing, and it's learning to value people. You see, growing up, if I was going to be honest, and I believe most of us on the surface are this way, and it's not our fault, it's kind of like the human nature of who we are, we naturally, it seems to be, are pretty self-centered, self-absorbed, self-circulating around me, 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 where I want to go, what I want to do. I realized at the end of the day, when I was growing up, from my youth all the way up to when I was 23, I would, every person that I come in contact with, know that they matter. How can I do random acts of kindness? And it changed me for a few reasons. For one, when you start 
doing random acts of appreciation and kindness. It's like a boomerang, y'all. You throw it and it comes right back around. What you give away, you get to keep, man. People will start also seeing that you care about others. They'll start caring about you. And without you even trying to value people to gain position and to gain advancing in your dreams and your goals, when you begin to value people and be a person who cares about people, it always creates opportunity for us to continue to advance in our dream. It's, it's crazy. Crazy, man. And then what else I've learned is growing up, there was a lot of times people said, hey, Nathan, you have worth, you have value, I believe in you. And you probably have had those people, right? They tell you, don't give up, we believe in you. And they tell you it over and over and over again, and yeah, it sounds good. But man, you go back to your house and you're by yourself, those words... They're just words because you don't feel that way. You don't feel like you have worth and you don't feel like you have value. And so what I've learned is this, and I didn't even see this really coming this way, but I had such a hard time beginning to really have self-belief of self-worth, self-esteem, understanding that, you know, my past wasn't my, 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 wasn't my bigger than my future, that I could change, that I could overcome my anxiety, my depression, my struggles in life. It was so hard because everybody told me how important I was, but I didn't feel it. But when I started, even in the middle of all of my stuff, I committed in my heart and in my mind, I'm going to be intentional about letting people around me know that they matter. Random acts of kindness, words of encouragement, literally going above and above, above and beyond my way to let people know that they matter. Just being a good person, man. You know what began to happen and I didn't even realize it? I stopped focusing on all the negative attributes of who I was and my lack of self-worth and my lack. I stopped focusing on all the things and the negativity and I started focusing on who could I help and who could I pour out to and who could I give to. And what I realized over time, I stopped focusing on all the things that I could never change. And I realized what you starve will die. What you feed will grow. What I put my time and my focus into, it was always getting bigger. But when I started not allowing the the negative lifestyle, the negative energy, the negative people, the negative influence, and all this thing to consume me, and I took my attention off of my failures and started focusing on how can I continue to work on personal development and helping people, I turned around years later and I was like, man, I really have this sense of purpose, self-worth, self-value. Like I was beginning to believe what people said about me. Why? Because what you give away, you get to keep, y'all. And so I began to work on these five areas of my life, learning to be committed. Now, these things don't just happen by, by, by accident. You have to be intentional. You have to wake up and say, today, I want to be intentional of making sure I'm being transparent with the people that I trust. I want to make sure I'm being intentional and allowing them to hold me accountable. You don't have to, but how bad do you want that best life that you want to live? Because no one's going to care about your future more than you. I don't care what people say. Yep, teachers and and coaches and mentors and parents, they care about you, absolutely. But when it's all said and done, there's only you and no one will ultimately ever care about the quality of your life more than you. And no one's going to spoon feed it to you, but also nobody can take it from you. Put in the work, make good choices, value people, be accountable, be transparent, and nothing can stop you, y'all. And so what I did when I came home from that prison... In, in 2013, about six years ago, after getting released 11 years early, after I only did four, and I came to that hometown, and everybody said, Nathan, you want to be an inspiration? What? Dude, you don't have the vernacular that can communicate that message to persuade the audience and the crowd. And I said, you're right, I don't. And you're not the most gifted, the most talented. I said, you're right, I'm not. But this is what I know. Hard work works, and hard work can outwork talented people who don't want to work that hard. I refuse to let the fear of failure hold me hostage. I refuse to let the words of negativity hold me back. This is what, this is what I learned. I live by this, man. And I say it in this kind of a, of a, of a paraphrase. You're never going to know if you're going to sink or swim unless you jump in the water. You're never going to know what you can accomplish or what you are going to struggle at unless you get in the game. 
Some of you are like, you know what? At the end of the day, when it's all said and done, you know, can I just be real with y'all? Can I be real? Some of y'all just know your attitude sucks. For real. Some of y'all just know that your attitude's crap. You treat people the wrong way. You're disrespectful. Some of you act like you just don't care, but really when no one's around, really you do care, but you have such a fear of letting go of that anger, of that hurt, of that frustration, and it comes out by, by you hurting people. Some of you, there are areas in your life that you know you're neglecting, and you act like it's no big deal, and we can just gloss over it. Nothing's going to change, y'all. I had to learn the hard way. I had to go through a lot of craziness and, and, and I compromised myself and I gave in to peer pressure and I gave in to this and I cared so much about all of you accepting me. I just needed all of you to think and give me your, your, your self-approval of me that I was willing to compromise what I knew was right and I was wrong. And you know what it led me to? Heartache, destruction, disasters. Not only my life, I affected another life. I battled with an addiction, man, that about killed me. So I started living by these five. And I went into that first school six years ago because I didn't listen to everybody tell me I was a failure. I didn't listen to their hype. I pursued my dream. I respected my dream and I worked for it. I sent a hundred packets of this paper around with my little promo CD. It said Nathan Harmon promo CD. It was terrible. Hard copy. Spent $400. You have to invest in you, y'all. I'm not talking about just money. I'm talking about your energy, your focus, your effort, your sacrifice, your attention. you got to invest in you. And I did it. And I spent $400 of my money that I didn't have, sent all these packets out here in Indiana. One school six years ago called me back, and one turned to 10, and 10 turned to 30, and 30 turned to 70, and 70 turned to 100. And in 2017, and 2018, and 2019, I became the number one book school speaker in this nation. Why? Hard work works. Make good choices. Rip off the mask. Don't put it back on. Use the people around you. And care about people. And nothing will stop you, y'all. Like, it really is this simple. But we've got to stop blaming everybody. So I began that journey. But in the middle of that process, after two years of the first year, I did like 10 schools, and then we did like 30, and then we did like 70. And I'll be honest, man, I was like, I started feeling myself like, man, we're making it. We're doing good against all odds. And I was living in Kokomo, Indiana. Kokomo, for all the old folks up in here, it's not a Beach Boy song. I live there. It's where I'm from. And there was a lady named Tammy. <laughs> Tammy, whatever. And Tammy said, Nate, can I come talk to you? I was like, yeah, Tammy, sure, for let's go. I thought for sure Tammy was going to come tell me how proud she was of me. And Tammy was going to tell me how great I did and how, how much that she's glad I persevered. And Tammy was a, a, a business lady who was self-made, started a company from nothing, built this amazing organization, doing really well, an amazing person. And she was like, hey, can I come talk to you? I'm like, yeah, Tammy, come on. I, for real, I thought Tammy was going to tell me just how spectacular and how proud she was of me. I need a volunteer. I need one. I need one. I need one. Come on. I need one. Come on. Please. They're all saying you. They're all saying you. Come on. Let's go. Yep. Yep. Come on. Come up here. Come up here. Absolutely. What's your name? What is it? Mio? Mia. Mia. Beautiful name, Mia. Have a seat, Mia. Sit down right there. Watch, 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 y'all. This, it's so simple. And maybe some of you have seen it before and you need to see it again. But check this out. Mia, Tammy showed up and Tammy said, hey, Nate, can I get real with you? And I'm like, yeah, what's up? And I thought for sure, no, she was like, no, no, no. Can I get like serious? I want to have a heart to heart. And the whole time, Mia, I thought Tammy was really going to tell me how, how proud and amazing I was doing, right? Like for sure. In the back of my head, I'm like, Stroke my ego, let me know how proud, like, absolutely, what's up, be real. Dude, Tammy stepped all over my little ego, my pride, all my feelings. She stepped on me like I was a rag doll. She said, okay, I'm going to get real with you, Nathan. Listen, you're missing meetings. Yeah, you did 70 schools. That's kind of cool, but you're disorganized. You're dropping the ball here. Your focus is over there. And if you think 70 schools is you making a real difference, there's hundreds and hundreds of thousands of other schools, and you haven't even tapped the tip of the iceberg yet. Are you settling for this? She said, your priorities are out of whack. And me, I wanted to tell Tammy to shut up. Be real. 
It would have been really easy for me to say, Tammy, shut your mouth, right? Now, really, it wouldn't be the right thing to do. But man, here I am. I've kind of carved out my own lane, my own space. But here comes Tammy, who I understood was a successful business lady who went from nothing and built something. And I've went from nothing with no endorsements, and I was trying to create a space. It's hard to break into the speaking space, man. There's a, there's, there's a lot of people that say, Nathan, there's a lot of more. I mean, I get this, this, this place and this space. And so I recognize something. I don't need to recreate the wheel, Mia. And at the end of the day, if I will allow people to speak into my life, if I will allow people who are more experienced that can help me so I don't have to make the same mistakes and the same pitfalls, you know what? Shoot, I'm all in. So I listened to her, Tam- and, and Mia, and, and Tammy said, Nathan, your life, your life is like glass balls and tennis balls. And I was like, huh? And she said, no, life. Life's all about choices. Some choices are like glass balls. They're fragile. Other things in life, they're not bad, but they're also not as important. And Nathan, your priorities are out of whack. You're putting too much time and effort and energy into certain things that aren't necessarily bad, but they're not going to benefit your life in the way that certain priorities will. And you're neglecting some areas in your life, Nathan, that if you're not careful, you're going to drop, they're going to shatter, and you can't just put those things back together. And I was dumb. It was character. And when I say character, I, I simply mean this. See, your character matters. If you don't learn to work on your character, your gifts and your talents will put you on platforms, will put you on stages, will put you in areas in your life that your character can't keep you. You may be gifted, you may be talented, but at the end of the day, if you don't know how to respect people, if you don't know how to be punctual and learn how to constantly to, to self-develop and grow, your character matters. I don't care how gifted you are. If you don't know how to treat people, you're not going to stay in your gift very long. They will find somebody else. How we treat each other matters. Value people. Hold that too. Now I want you to stand up. Come here, Mia. All right. So now those are the things, Mia, that are important in life. I realize, like, these things matter. Back up a little bit more here just in case, you know, you drop one. But then I realized, you know, there's a lot of things in life that aren't necessarily bad, but aren't as important. There are glass balls. These things are fragile. Your dream, your education, your support group, and your character, those things need to take your time, your effort, your focus. But there's other things that we can do in life. We can only do so many things. There's other things like, how many of you guys love sleep? Anybody love sleep? Right, absolutely. Listen, I was a master of sleep. I manipulated the alarm clock to a 15-minute snooze, which means that if I hit snooze one time every single day for one year, I slept away 3.7 days of my life by hitting snooze an extra 15 minutes. Do you know how much better in volleyball if you had a dedicated 96 hours just to actually serving or volleying or whatever the volleyball language would be, right? Sleep's not bad. Hold that, please. No, I need you to hold it. Thank you. Hold, okay. We're going to get this together. How about social media, right? We got social media. Nothing wrong with social media. Not that it's bad, but I need you to hold that too. Do you have any friends? What's your friends' names? Nevaeh. Hi, Nevaeh. Oh, bye, Nevaeh. Oh, whatever. Careful. So we got social media. Nevaeh, don't drop her. Listen, are you going to hold Nevaeh or not? Thank you, Nevaeh. Stay right there. Well, who else are your friends? Josh. Josh. Hi, Josh. Like. <laughs> Josh. Okay, this is good. This is good. So hold on, hold on. Sorry, Josh. Sorry, Nevaeh. Do you have pets? Yeah. What's your, what's your pet's name? Don't have animal violence up here now. Uh, what it, oh, sorry, Nevaeh. Like, like, here. There you go. Like. Okay, we're going to get this together. You can only hold so much, right? So we got some pets. We got some friends. Careful. Hold on. That's all you're holding right. What about some, what's a hobby besides volleyball? You like, what else do you like to do? Okay. So now look, though, here's the reality. Right now you got all this. Now what happens if you drop... Hold on. Wait, 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 wait. 
No, 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 no. Uh, all right. Mia, have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Now watch. Let me see. You can, you can keep your dream. Hold your dream. Tammy was trying to show me something. Priorities matter. There are some things in your life that are fragile. Other things, like Josh, man, you're cool, bro, but I got my education that I got to get done. And at the end of the day, sleep, you're not bad. But when I have time to sleep an extra 15 minutes on the weekend, I can come back. But see, my problem was, and my biggest failure and my biggest mistake was I had priorities and things I wanted to achieve. But when I was in school, I was notorious, but my friends wanted to kick it and clown and go have a good time. And at the end of the day, if I didn't get this certain paper done to get a GPA to have a certain grade so I can maybe get approved to a certain college. At the end of the day, I had these two choices and it was always easy for me just to be like, (laughs) and at the end of the day, once you drop your education or you drop your, or you start breaking your circle of your friends and lying to them and breaking trust, or you don't focus on your character, really what I should have done when it's all said and done, when my crew and my friends wanted to hang out, listen, I can't, I got something that I need to do. I can always come back later when I have time. Tammy was trying to teach me to prioritize my life, our life, your life as freshmen and juniors this year. It's all about priorities. And you can tell me what's important to you but what you do is what you believe and how I know this worked it was when Tammy had this conversation with me and I went to my team and I said I'm going to focus this year on being the best communicator possible I'm going to focus on mentors speaking into my life. I'm going to focus on treating people a special type of way. It was this moment that I went from doing 70 schools just in Indiana to becoming a national and international speaker and became the top book school speaker in the nation. Prioritize your life. It will change your life. Give her a round of applause, man. You can keep that. Y'all listen, man. Check this out. Listen, y'all. Listen, 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 listen. Hold on. Guys. I am passionate about every single word that I shared with you. In this room. And we can laugh and we can joke, but in all seriousness, there are some of us in here that are battling socially and emotionally. There are some of us in here that are compromising ourselves. And see, when I talk about vaping and juuling, I know a majority, a lot of y'all are doing it. See, I don't, I don't come down on it because you shouldn't in school. I don't come down on it for some, most of you are of age to do it. I don't come down on you because of the health issues and they're finding out. All those are, are serious, valid reasons. But even on vaping and jeweling, you know why I'm such a, a believer in, in, in you guys taking control of your life? It's because it's a compromise. And if you start to compromise on little areas in your life, you will compromise on bigger areas of your life. And you got to begin to understand, at the end of the day, compromise is never going to give you the quality of life that you want. And I don't want any of you to turn around in 5, 10, 15 years and to look back and have all these regrets and all these what ifs. You're at a space and a place right now for you to write your dream down, to write your goal down, really prioritize your life, value people, support each other. My challenge for some of you is when you get home, when you have a moment of of quiet, when you're listening to your iTunes, your Spotify, whatever you're doing, to take a second and to really write down something that you really would like to see change in your life. To really take the time to write down something you know you need to find that trusted, caring person that you can talk to about. To be transparent, to learn to be accountable. So that you can really start working hard, making the choices, valuing people, so your dreams, so when you leave here in two years or in four years, you're walking into the next chapter of your destiny, y'all. We are better together. I learned to follow rules and I've learned to respect people 
not because they demand it. They do deserve it. But if I don't learn to respect people, how will I ever learn to respect my dream? Can you give your teachers and your staff a big round of applause, please? Listen, y'all. Like normal, I got just a couple minutes. I want everybody right now to get your phones out. If you got your phones, I got like two minutes. Get your phones out. Hold on, hold on. We're going to take... We're going to take two pictures like we did last year, man. I want you to take a picture of this assembly. I want you to take a picture of you and the people around you. Real quick, take those two pictures right now. A personal reminder. I like that, man. Listen to me, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. When you walk through these doors, man, change takes intentional choices to be different. My team and I, man, we radically record all this stuff. We're always putting powerful content out. Social media isn't going anywhere. We're here to combat it with positivity. Your Life Speaks is the name of all of our stuff. Our IG account's the number one vehicle that we use. We have a Snapchat, it's not a very effective, but our YouTube and our IG are the top vehicles that we use to put out powerful content day in and day out. We have Twitter and Snapchat and, and Facebook and all of them, but it's IG and YouTube. Listen, guys, we're Your Life Speaks. I'm Nathan Harmon. Thank you all so much.